Hi beautiful people! Thank you so much for continuing to support my channel. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can make a donation, uh, my Amazon shop, watching and sharing, and all of those things you do to support my channel help me keep bringing these videos to you. So thank you so much. I want to share some inspired viewers uh, paintings today. And these were all sent to me by you guys. Jennifer's Wave, look at the colors on that one. I really enjoyed that piece. And Janice Space Odyssey, there's lots of pretty details on that one. This one by Tammy kind of reminded me of like an Aztec painting. Um, very interesting. And I'm in love with this one by Georgia Marlowe, this waterfall piece. It's a big one. Very, very pretty. And Julie sent me these really fun, <laughs> I love these trees. Two very different styles, but really cool. And then as Jane put it, her spooky funky tree. And I loved that one. So thanks guys for letting me be a part of your art and vice versa. Now, today's painting, do you guys remember this one? So I did this one a couple videos back. This is flower dip on a bed of metallic and the bronze and the espresso metallics. And then I just did a little bit of embellishing with my dotting tool. I kept thinking I wanted some vines. Well, so I decided to try a second attempt at the same painting. And so I'm going to show you the second attempt. It's on the same size canvas, an 11 by 14. And this is the Deco Art Espresso. Now all my paints are mixed today with Oetrol and water. And then a little bit of Golden's Bronze. I think I used a little bit of glue wall in these two, you guys, because I'm running out of pouring medium. So um, these are the colors that were used in this painting, and all of these are considered, this is a, a considered a puddled pour, if you are unfamiliar with the term. So basically, I'm just pouring the paints in a little puddle. And... If you didn't want to dip anything into the puddle, uh, you could also just wreck the puddle and pour. It gives some really beautiful effects that way. Or you could swipe the puddle and see some cool effects like that. The cool part about a puddle pour is you have a lot of control over exactly what colors are next to each other. And that's one of the beautiful parts of that. That little bit of black in there just adds a little tiny bit of depth if you saw at the end. And I'm just using like a packing material uh, bubble. Gloves are so, you know, hard to come by right now. And I'm also trying to preserve the ones that I do have. You know, our healthcare workers need the gloves right now. So I'm using a packing material um, for the dip and then just a little tilt to get kind of some of the cells developing. Now that color flash paint right there, you've seen me use it in the last three videos. I'm totally in love with those two folk art color flash paints. And then you can see I'm just adding one on top of the other, trying to anticipate, you know, what will happen when I dip it. It's good to mix a metallic or two when you do a dip. You'll find that's how you get a lot of those cells. And for this one, I decide I'm going to wreck it a little bit. And I do. Now if you pull it off and it's not exactly what you want, go ahead and stick it back down again. You can see I'm hesitating a little bit, <laughs> but I, one thing I do know is it will continue to develop a little bit. So 
See that gold metallic is gonna add a little bit of cell action in there along with the background of course because the background is all metallics so just do a little tilting the tilting helps move the paint around um, and shift the paint is what I mean so it'll also help develop some little pretty effects just a little bit of tilting I'm not trying to dump anything off the canvas or anything so I decide I need at least one more little blossom on here. A little bit of white. And then here is the part where my camera ran out of batteries, so I'm so sorry we don't get to see the last dip. But here are the wet results for the, that painting. See how pretty. Now here's the first painting I did on the left and the second one on the right. Now do you remember the collaboration I did with Sandra Lett recently? She did this beautiful embellishment over my pore. If you didn't see that, I will try to link it right here for you guys to check it out. That is a gorgeous piece that we did together. I love the way that our art is together. It's incredible. So this is what she used to do those gold embellishments. And that's in my Amazon shop if you're interested. So you can go find it in there. And I thought, okay, so that is basically made to screw on any two ounce bottle. And the preference is the Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. She said that was the best. And so I take her advice because her paintings that she's been doing, this whole gold embellishment series that she's been doing are absolutely stunning. And so that's it. You just screw it on. Just make sure to wash it out when you're done so the cap doesn't clog. And then I just started. Now, I sped this up so you guys didn't have to watch every little detail, but I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks that she told me because I asked her what should I do. Uh, one of the things that she said was to pick a color that will pop. So in other words, maybe not do something like a bronze because I already have a bronze for the background. So I decided to do the gold. I do have a little bit of gold, if you remember, in each little puddle pour too. So I'm hoping that'll help bring that out. The other thing she said was, go on the internet and find a picture of some vines that you like, and then use that as a guide. So I did. Now, mine didn't turn out the way <laughs> that of the picture that I saw. It wasn't the same at all, but it did help inspire me. And um, so that was a really good tip. And you'll see um, that's a good way to just feel a little bit more confident trying something new because I've never done this before. And I think I was scared of making it too busy, but I really love the end result, the ornate um, look of it. And in some ways I wish I could also do a little bit more delicate lines. So you'll see me, I took out a skewer, I wanted to kind of straighten out some of those little leaves. Just to get more of like a delicate finish for the ending of those leaves. hard to know when to stop. That is one thing. I just felt like I could keep going and going and going and going. And you know, so you don't want to do too much, but you want to do enough that the composition is there for the whole piece. We'll turn it around and give it a good look. <laughs> I was contemplating there. Cause this is highly sped up so you can see I was definitely contemplating 
just adding a few last little touches and I think that's it you guys that's really pretty I think it made the piece pop Here it is under the light, you can see, not perfect, not perfect, but it's, um, for a first try, I feel pretty happy about this, and I'll show you guys in another video what it looks like dried. I'm pretty happy with this, and I think it's really pretty, very ornate and beautiful. This piece is for sale, and so is the other one, if you like either one of these pieces, please email me at heathermaderart.com. I would love to, to uh, sell you one of these beautiful pieces. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to make more art videos just for you guys. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications so I can make more art videos just for you.